Continuing on with the exploration of the menu system in the new Lumix S1 and S1R, we're now looking at the video settings. So going up to the top of the video page, image quality, we'll start with exposure mode. So this is again, a lot of the stuff we've seen before. This allows you to choose between, actually let me switch the camera into the video mode. Switch between program after shutter manual, so nothing new there. Photo styles, metering mode, ISO sensitivity, nothing new in here. Uh, this one, I actually, this is new, but I don't fully understand what it is. It's an auto exposure in the program mode. It basically says that it's still auto when you're in these other modes. I don't quite understand exactly what it means. Um, I think this combined with this creative video combined set is a difference between whether your settings carry over from when you're in a still mode, just pushing the red video button on the back versus switching into the full video mode. Not 100% sure though, that's going to take some more time to figure out and sort through. Record quality, let's take a quick look at what you have. So you have full 4K or Ultra HD up to 60p, so that's 4208-bit. And then there's your 4208-bit 30p, 4208-bit uh, 24p, 2398, and then full HD 1920, 1920 by 680 and 60p and 30p. You have the ability to do high-speed video. So again, this is like the G9, not the GH series cameras, but the G9 camera where you have less control over your high-end video functions. Here you can shoot 180 frames per second up to, uh, up to full HD or in full HD up to 180 frames per second or 120 frames per second, 60p in 4K and 48p in 4K or turn that off. Uh, file format, nothing there. Autofocus custom settings for video, nothing new in there. Sound record, is nothing new in those. Image, uh, HDMI record output, just turns that on or off. Image stabilizer, um, yeah, nothing new in there. The Boost IS is simply a rename of what you had before, putting it into a kind of a tripod-like mode. And that is all there is to that. Uh, now here's the last thing here that's really, really interesting. So. A few people have asked about modifying or mounting alternate lenses on here. This is obviously a full frame camera requiring full frame lenses. I've already talked about how you can actually take even larger than full frame medium format lenses and use a speed booster to magnify that, bring that down, fit that into full frame, just like we can take full frame and adapt into micro four thirds and actually gain light output from it. You can do the same thing with larger lenses here. So you could take a medium format lens and adapt that to this camera using that. It's remarkable but you can go the other way. So there, I'm assuming already are out there, I haven't seen them yet, but since the text already built into here, there's gotta be something in existence, you can actually go to an APS-C size sensor space. So if you are using an APS-C size lens, which would vignette around the full sensor, you can tell this to push in and use an APS-C size sensor. Even more so, you can go down to pixel for pixel. So it's gonna push in all the way. So if you're shooting 4K full HD, then you are going to be cropping off quite a bit because you're actually starting with something closer to 6K, scaling to 4K, but you can push into 4K or you can push all the way down to 1080p, which is going to really give you just the center, just the smallest part of the sensor, which in this case, maybe, theoretically, if someone was able to build an adapter to take older, smaller lenses and put them on there, maybe it would work. I'm, I'm guessing here at this point, but at least the camera is capable of using just a smaller portion of the sensor. And that is everything in there. So now we're gonna move on to the next section.